There is no question the country needs a major investment in infrastructure. Where passage of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act allows us to provide uh, funding that uh, has been elusive for, for many, many years. And one of the areas most in need is the nation's aging and crumbling bridges. The bipartisan infrastructure bill includes $550 billion in new spending over the next five years, and $36.7 billion will go toward bridge repair and replacement. There are more than 618,000 bridges in the federal database, and over 45,000 of them are in poor condition. The American Road and Transportation Builders Association says it'll cost nearly 40 two billion dollars to fix them all. This bridge is one of just a few ways to cross the river near downtown Charleston, West Virginia, and it's one of over 1500 bridges across the state listed in poor condition. But a poor rating does not mean the bridge is unsafe. If a bridge in West Virginia is unsafe, that bridge is closed or that bridge is posted for a weight limit that were, that would make it safe. And that is absolutely the truth. West Virginia has a higher percentage of poor rated bridges than any other state. New Newsy reached out to the other states, ranked 2 through 10, and nearly all the officials we talked to shared the exact same message. Just because it says poor condition does not mean that it's not safe. If it wasn't safe, it would be closed. The bridges in Maine are safe. Um, we have a really robust bridge inspection program. Bridges are evaluated based on their substructure, superstructure, and deck. The Federal Highway Administration gives each of those elements a rating from 0 to 9, and those three numbers are combined to categorize the bridge as good, fair, or poor. If any one of those three elements gets a 4 or lower, the entire bridge is deemed in poor condition. If the deck had a few potholes in it and it's rated poor, the whole bridge is poor. If a bridge is so unsafe that it's closed, that can cause huge headaches for drivers who rely on it every day. And when a bridge fails, the results can be devastating. The influx of money from the bipartisan infrastructure bill should help officials prevent either of those scenarios from happening. If you believe what you're reading, there's going to be so much money that I don't think you really have to have a top priority. There'll be enough money to go around. But new funding won't necessarily go to the biggest and busiest bridges first. You have to make sure you're addressing the rural bridges. And oh, by the way, you likely shouldn't have some of them weight restricted. So you can have the tractor trailers get across to the farm to get the milk to bring the milk back. Our logging industry in Pennsylvania is very big. West Virginia and Rhode Island use an asset management system that analyzes statewide data to figure out where they can get the most bang for their buck. If I have a, di a bridge with a poor deck and the substructure and the superstructure are good, then I could, I could literally model a scenario to where, okay, if I replace the deck in two years, I could stretch the life of this bridge. The additional federal funds can also help states keep up with bridge maintenance and preservation, and that can prolong the life of existing bridges and save money in the long run. Stephanie Liebergen, Newsy, Charleston, West Virginia.